me. I hope you're doing well. Um, I got this word um, from the Lord uh, about last week. No, this week um, sometime. I was watching, mm, let's pray first of all. Father, I thank you and I bless you for what you're going to do through this word and through this sermon. Oh God, I pray that you will, you will reach people for your glory, God. You will just have your way, Holy Spirit. Speak to me, speak through me in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Um, I was watching this sermon. Uh, not sermon. I think I was watching Red Table Talk with um, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, it's a Facebook show that she has with her daughter and her mother and they talk about um, different issues. Anyway, um, I was on that show, on this particular episode, I was uh, binge watching it, and on this particular episode, um, there was this minister, this pastor, and his wife, and there was a pastor that I, it was a pastor that I um, totally respect, and um, he said, well, what, what if you, what if you have issues as, as a man in, in regards to worthiness and whatever, and they had the, the discussion about relationships in the pandemic, like, and he said, what if you're not sure of your, your place as a man and you have worthiness issues and all that and um and then the psychology the um the guest doctor told him something and um I sat back and watched I said um I said you know what if I, I, I'm not perfect, but I'm saying, I said to myself, if I could tell that preacher anything about feeling worthy, um, I would say, I, and I would think, and I, and I said to myself, well, I would say this and all that. And then I overheard someone talking about this generation and how weak we are and all that stuff. And I was like, the Lord, the Lord, I caught myself being kind of judgy about this, per, about this preacher. If I was there, I would do this. Uh, and the Lord had to check me in my spirit. He said, well, you're not there. And you don't even know the situation. You don't even know the person's pain. So after he, he checked me, he gave me the sermon title, Tough Stuff. So that's what today's sermon is called. It's called Tough Stuff. And, and the Lord um, brought me, because I often have issues with self-esteem, oh, they won't listen to me, or... I will never uh, find a man, I'm not as pretty as, or a man will never find me rather, I'm not as pretty as her, and uh, my disability will, um, will inhibit me from someone finding me, and all this negative stuff, and the Lord said, the Lord said something really powerful when I was uh, kind of beaten up on myself, beaten up on myself, beaten up on myself. He said, who are you to wit God's child? He said, who are you to wit my child? He said, 
You are my child. Stop whipping my child. And I said, whoa. Um, and he brought me back to what he told Jeremiah, with, with, um, which was, you, you are formed in your mother's womb. And he brought me back to the, um, that I am a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen generation. And all these scriptures kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. And he said, "Tell I, I want you to realize, Rachel, that you are made of tough stuff. He's like, you are made of what I put in you, not what is happening around you. He says, you are made of what I put in you. And... You are made of tough stuff. You can't break. You can't break unless you let them break you. You can't bend unless you let them bend you. He's like, I have given you the power over your thoughts, over your decisions, over your feelings. I have given you all that power. What are you going to do with it? And no that you are made of tough stuff. And and he, he said, you are, you are saying all this negative stuff about yourself that is not true. He said, he said, speak the word before you even believe the word. He says, you don't even have to believe that you're worthy. You don't have to believe that you're good enough. You don't even have to believe that you're that you're all this. All you have to do is speak it and keep speaking it. And eventually what you speak will become your reality. Um, in Genesis, um, he spoke and it was. He spoke and it was. So because we're ma made in the image of God, we speak and it is. So whatever we speak, it will eventually become our reality. And so if we speak, oh my God, I'm not as good as um, her. I'm not as pretty as her. I'm, I'm not as, you know, sexy as her. No man will ever want to be with me. My disability uh, will be a hindrance for a man or whatever. Um, he, uh, he's saying that's what will happen. But he's like, begin speaking it, even if you don't feel it, if you don't see it, and it will become your reality. And another thing he said, he said, um, he said, do you think God makes, makes mess or anything imperfect? And I said, no. He said, well, then do you think God made you? And I said, Yes, he said, if God, if I made you, but I don't make anything imperfect, but you call yourself trash, you know, all these negative things or speak negatively about yourself, what, what does that say about my word? That that makes it null and void. And I was like, whoa. He said, that makes it of none effect. So basically, you're calling me a, a liar because you're saying that you're all this. You're not this. You're not that. You're not like this preacher or that preacher. Um, they're better than you. You're saying all this about yourself, so you're calling me a liar. But yet you say in, yet you say you believe in the word of God, but in my word, but in my word it says, I'm not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. So which is it? And that had me on the floor for days. Like, not literally on the floor, but in my mind it was like, oh my God. And another thing he said to me, which was so powerful, 
he said, he said, you always say God's, um, God's word is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And I said, yep. Yeah. And he said, well, um, he said, when you look at Genesis, um, he said in the creation of the universe, he said, God, there's a phrase that keeps repeating, God saw and it was good. God saw and it was good. He said that after everything he created, you will see a, repet a repetition phrase, God saw and it was good. God saw and it was good. Um, so if God saw and it was good then, why can't, why can't it be God saw you from afar and it was and it was good now with you and oh my god this this revelation of Genesis just had me in awe just I don't have the words for it and, and he said you're made of tough stuff he said you're not made of the things around you the things around you affect you the the uh, the things around you may may um contribute to your environment and give you some attributes that i would want for you but the things around you don't affect you or yeah he said they don't affect you and i said what do you mean of course they affect me. He said, it's what's in you that is affecting you. So if you let the negative situations around you affect you, that's where it becomes a problem. Because if you constantly let the negativity and the... Um, issues with COVID-19 and issues with racism in the states and issues with job loss. All the situations around you affect you. It will damage what I put in you. But if you can have a healthy perspective of what's around you, um, healthy meaning God's perspective about what's around you and not let it get in you. If you can watch it, but not let it, not dwell on it, be informed about it, but not let the information overtake you, that will give you a healthy perspective and it won't get in you. If you can, uh, if you can weed weed out all that negative, all those negative thoughts and that negative perspective with my word, it will change your life. And I want to tell you that what is around you is def is def is defining you. That's why you're having such a hard time. Because you're letting what's around you get in you. You're constantly feeding on the mess. So that's why you're worried and you can't sleep at night. And you're getting stomach aches and stomach pains. And all these stressful things happen to you. Is because... You're letting what's around you get in you. And he said, he said, adopt my word over, over their word or what you think. And I said, what do you mean? He said, God said to me, if you, ad, ad, 
adopt my word over your word, pretty soon your perspective will change on yourself. He's like, you don't, he's like, you don't have to feel worthy. You don't have to feel good enough. But what matters is that I made you good enough. I made you worthy. I've created, um, I've created you. So the fact that I've created you and give you gave you life means that you're not only good enough, but you're exactly what I need for this world. He said, Rachel, you give something that this world needs. And I will say the same thing to you. Beloved, you give something that this world needs. Of course we need you. Of course we, we love you. Of course we, we receive what God's put in you. But but aside from people receiving it, God loves you and he's creating you to, to for a purpose. He's creating you to do things beyond your control and you are made of tough stuff and you won't die here. You will not die here. You do not have permission to die here. And when I say um, die, I don't mean physically die all the time. I mean, uh, you don't have permission to spiritually die, to socially die, to relationally die, to mentally die. You do not have permission to die here. God says to live Live, live, declares the Lord. He said, live. He said, you don't have to walk around dead. It's like that movie called The Walking Dead. Somebody out there is walking around dead right now. And the Lord said, right now, he says, live. He said, you don't have to walk around dead anymore. You don't have to walk around in bondage anymore. You don't have to walk around with chains anymore. He's come to set you free. And that freedom is available, beloved, today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of restoration. Today is the day of healing. Today, you don't have to stay stuck in guilt. You don't have to stay stuck in in shame there is freedom available in Jesus and I'm not talking about the um the religious kind of oh let's go to church and raise our hands I'm talking about a real relationship with Jesus one where you can ask the real questions I've been listening to uh Stephen Furtick over the past few weeks um, those of you who don't know me, he's like, he's like one of my, um, he is, he is my favorite preacher. And he was talking about today, for the past few weeks, he was talking about, uh, the questions we ask ourselves. And he was talking about the ways and question, that question shape our lives. And we all have, we always have these negative questions. But if we form, but I was sitting there thinking, if we form these negative questions into not positive questions, but productive questions, questions that can activate ourselves. Um, we will change the whole game. So, for instance, instead of saying, why me? Say, Lord, what is, what is this? 
What is the purpose of this situation in my life? What is, what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to spark in my life? And I think when we, when we ask what are you trying to spark in, in uh, my life and what are you trying to achieve, that will change the whole game because that will drive us to solutions that, that will change not only our lives, but it could change our entire neighborhoods or our entire selves. And I think um, we, we've been living in brokenness for too long and the Lord is calling for freedom and he's saying right now, He's saying, you are made of tougher stuff than you could ever imagine. He said, you, you are made of tougher stuff than you could ever imagine. He said, he said, the essence of a person is not how much they fall. It's what they do with what they learned while they were down. Not, not even how fast you can get up or what you do when you get up. He said, what? He said, it's not that they fall or it's not even that they got up. It's that what, 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 what did you do with what you learned while you were down? I always talk about building spiritual muscle. I always talk about trouble um, being the catalyst for building sp spiritual mu muscle and develop developing the toughness in you, developing the never give up spirit in you, developing that can't give up now spirit in you. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing. A lot of people quit a little, and a lot of people walk away, but without realizing that if they stay in the game, that is developing tough stuff in them. And you are made of tough stuff. You are made of more than what you think. And it is so phenomenal. When I think, and he said, when I think of what has, what God been revealing to me over the past few weeks about my life, and I'm sharing that with you, this is amazing. Um, share this video if you think it'll help someone, because it definitely helped me to change the questions I'm asking and to make them not just not just uh, still um, still stagnant questions, but to make them questions that will take me somewhere. It's okay to ask questions, but still um, stagnant questions are questions that don't move you anywhere. But but questions that move you somewhere can activate things inside you. Like if you say, Lord, why me? Why is this happening to me? Well, the answer won't move you anywhere. But if you, if you can, can say, what, what purpose are you working out with what's happening to me right now? What do you want me to know? What do you want me to learn? What do you want me to move on? Um, coming from the lessons that I'm learning in this moment. That question will move you places and, and you'll realize what tough stuff you're actually made out of. So don't ask still questions, ask questions that 
that move that will activate destiny that will activate purpose having to do with what what is going on in your life right now so so um say if you lost your job in covid and you had a job right before covid but you lost it because they didn't need you the company didn't need you and couldn't afford to pay you because everything was shut down um you could ask lord why did i lose my job or you can ask what tools do did i learn from that job that i can now take and start my own business Because, um, see, that's a retroactive question that will move you to another level of purpose. So I don't think it's wrong to ask still, que still questions just to get answers for ourselves. But it's if we stay in asking uh, still questions. Still questions are questions that don't move us anywhere. We get answers and, and we either have more questions or get more frustrated. But retroactive questions are questions that move us uh, uh, from glory to glory and level to level and they develop spiritual muscle. So guys, Thank you so much today for joining me for for at least few minutes. Um, thanks. Bye. God bless. said don't give up now you're so close don't give up now there's someone watching me or will be watching this tomorrow that is about to give up the Lord said don't give up because the moment you give up is the moment your destiny will be revealed your freedom will be become clear it's hazy right now but keep on moving forward, hun. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. But keep on going. Keep on moving. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. You, you just can't give up You've come too far from where you started from. Nobody told you that the road would be easy. And don't believe he brought you this far to leave you. There will be mountains that I will have to climb, and there will be battles that I will have to fight. But victory or defeat, it's up to me to decide. Is against the wall. If I never try, I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where 
I started from I feel resilient right rioting right now. I feel the not not give up spirit rising right now. Somebody that was about to give up on God's dream for their lives. Somebody that was about to give up on their business idea is now not, not going to because of the Lord's word today. Thank you, Lord. And, and there's somebody whose dream was buried, whose dream is buried. You have business plans. You have, you have tools, you have skills, but you buried your God dreams. He's saying, resurrect the dream. He's saying, resurrect the vision. It's not, he said, it's not dead, it's just delayed. He's saying here, it's not dead, it's just delayed. And you are made of tough stuff. You can take a licking and keep on ticking. He said, you are made of tough stuff. Like I said before, God doesn't make mess. He's working this out. You don't see it, but he's working it out. He's working it out in his favor. And it, his favor will benefit you because you're a child of God. And he loves you. He cares for you. He says, cast your burdens on me because I care for you. There's somebody else out there who doesn't think that God cares that you lost your job, that you've lost the business that you just started before COVID, but, but during COVID you had to shut down and now your business is totally gone. But I'm saying, he cares for you. He cares for you. He knows the financial strain that this has put on you. He's saying, hold tight. Don't give up. He's saying, he's saying, he's going to do it through you. You tried so much, m many things to get this business off the ground. He's saying, this go around. I'm going to do it through you. You are still the hands that I'm going to use. But this time, instead of putting all your energy, getting all this stress, uh, getting all stressed about this business, he's saying, let me take the wheel. Let me drive the car and you, and you will be the human being that I work through uh, to get this... Um, program off the ground, this business off the ground. Yes, Father, we bless you. We love you. In the name of Jesus. Bye, guys.